Hello, good weekend to all. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European, or should we say the US markets. For Monday's trading session, the 25th of July 2016, be sure to visit tradesignal.com, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can download the app from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store, and also visit the site www.tradesignal.com. Okay, now in terms of uh, US markets, let's try and decipher. Okay, uh, even though we had the uh, Asian markets down on uh, on a Friday, um, going into the weekend, and the US DJPY reversing, the uh, the US market still managed to uh, to move higher on the back of stronger PMI data, and even with the German uh, terrorist incident, I think there's been another one over the weekend as well. Uh, the market still ignoring risk. Okay, so again, totally risk averse. Well, not risk averse. They're embracing risk at present. Okay. Certainly embracing risk, and the markets are certainly being bid higher now. The chart that we all need to focus on is the USDJPY, from my perspective. The daily chart has put in a bearish engulfing candle, okay? So helicopter money now is being rejected and talked down, okay? So uh, given the fact that we moved from 99 up to uh, 107.5, uh, the, uh, the bullish uh, news certainly has been factored into the markets, from my perspective. Given the fact that you have a bearish engulfing candle in the USDJPY in the daily chart, uh, from my perspective, that certainly is bearish. Now, the four hour chart certainly is indicating a potential reversal is pending, given the fact that we've talked down QE or Kelly to, uh, helicopter money now. And uh, may, maybe the BOJ will certainly uh, disappoint to a large extent. Now, obviously, uh, helicopter money has been factored into the USDJPY. Also, uh, we have had stronger, obviously, economic data as well. So, a lot of this is mainly due to tapering, uh, obviously, expectations rising as well, as opposed to risk being embraced. So, just bear that in mind, folks, okay? It's not necessarily doesn't necessarily mean that we have risk of a risk on okay it just generally means that we are now factoring in potential uh, tapering as well so again tapering uh, concerns certainly are bearish for the market so bear that in mind as well generally considered to be bearish so again looking for a target of 105 on the usd jpy which indicates uh, obviously risk off for equity markets now for now we are again consolidating we have obviously terrorist concerns we have uh, munich we have france bastille uh, we obviously day uh, again so we have Afghanistan over the weekend as well 100 or 80 or 90 odd people obviously for uh, certainly uh, died passed away there due to terrorism etc so certainly is a factor obviously we have Brexit concerns as well in the background still even though it has been negated to a large extent so again there are a lot of things I mean we've had the situation with Baton Rouge as well with the racial tensions in the US so Certainly a lot of arguments to be made to, uh, to for a move lower, but the economic data from the US has been strong enough to indicate a potential uh, interest rate uh, rise. And again, that certainly is, will be uh, considered negative for the uh, stock market. So certainly bear that in mind. Using your Fibonacci retracement, taking the Fib high to the Fib low, and you are into that Fib 50% of the USD JPY. Therefore, based on that premise, I'm going to be looking for a bearish bias. Okay, USD JPY is dictating. Okay, now again, uh, let's just look at the other sectors as well. Let's look at the financials because the financials are very important here, folks. Now, on the daily chart, the financials, you can see ever since we've closed that gap, okay, markets are certainly stalled on the financials. Again, you have the unfilled gap below. Again, all eyes in that potential gap, and then you have multiple gaps as well. You've got one gap here, a gap here, you have a, a gap down here, gap here, obviously, this main gap here. So, again, from my perspective, you're stalled on the financials as you can see on the daily chart. We certainly have a potential here for a bear flag formation and obviously looking to move lower. So again, given the fact that it's earnings season as well, so just bear that in mind. Okay, so again, we just take it day by day. But from my perspective, certainly the financial sector certainly seems stalled and looks like it wants to move south. Okay, so that certainly is my understanding looking at this chart. Certainly seems exhausted to a large extent. Okay, so looking for a move lower. Right, in terms of the... Uh, Energy sector, let's now, now after we've looked at the financial, let's look at the energy sector. Okay, so the daily chart, the energy sector certainly remains uh, relatively. I mean, you are coming into gap fill support, so just bear that in mind. Okay, we'll have to re re cross reference that with oil shortly as well. So, in terms of uh, the energy sector, certainly is an argument for a potential support. Let's just cross reference that with oil. Okay, so let's look at US oil. So, daily chart on the US oil at present, you are making a new low. Okay. So the next potential support and oil now is seen at $40, okay, given the fact that you've broken lower. So again, uh, having said that, though, the economic data from Germany, France, and the U.S. has been strong. So whether or not this is relying on tapering and the lack of global growth, uh, again, is a concern. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so again, uh, given the fact that USDJPY trade has been factored in, 
and the ECB QE basically stronger economic data aren't the uh, France and Germany certainly indicates that they are going to uh, then there's basically no additional QE and uh, given the fact that obviously we had stronger data out of the US again indicating that they're going to be increasing rates so and given the fact that the US DJPY is in new highs there's no reason why they wouldn't cut rates so again take that into consideration okay so again looking for a potential low on oil down to $40 okay so again oil is indicating weakness okay so let's look at the chart of copper as well uh, if you look at a daily chart of copper you're looking at weakness again look at bearish engulfing candle certainly isn't a healthy sign and certainly looks like it wants to go lower so again bear that in mind okay again some food for thought on the daily chart of copper 60 minute chart bearish four hour chart certainly bearish as well given the fact that you've obviously made this pivot high and now we're just basically consolidating and you've got a classical h and s formation um, bubbling here as well so your left shoulder your head obviously up here you're looking for your right shoulder bear flag and down we go so copper certainly looks weak as well okay so therefore you're looking at say your projection onto equities and projection onto the dollar as well to a large extent if you look at the actual dollar itself you're breaking out higher that isn't a good sign for equities okay so again if you look to move higher again on the dot on on the us dollar then you are looking to move lower on commodities and therefore lo looking to hurt equities as well to a large extent okay usdjpy as well certainly take that into consideration if the yen starts to spike again that's going to hurt sentiment as well if you look at the chart of the nikkei you can see that we've obviously failed that gap for resistance at 16,900, and we certainly remain weak ever since okay especially with the usdjpy putting in a bearish engulfing candle the chart of oil uh, shanghai again you have an unfilled gap left below yes you do have the uh, h inverted head and shoulders formation but what's the catalyst to propel the chinese markets higher at the moment nothing much okay until we actually close the gaps below and then actually attempt to mount a uh, potential rally so again certainly some food for thought as well okay again food for thought and given the fact that we have terrorism concerns certainly rising across the globe and brexit concerns still in the background just just certainly uh, give that some thought as well okay now let's look at the actual market itself let's look at the vix first of all i just want to bring up the vix and give you an insight on the vix let's just have a look pro shares vix okay now at the moment my chart is distorted so it's a shame okay certainly is a shame from my perspective but you are looking at uh, at the moment it's on the daily chart you're certainly making it you're in lower lows and lower high territory at the moment okay so no no real gaze there other than the fact that it's bearish okay and again that could obviously indicate bullishness for you us equity okay daily chart of the uh, nasdaq first and foremost you're into gap for resistance certainly holding that resistance on 60 minute chart you're into double top resistance okay intraday so certainly holding you do have an unfilled gap below again so that certainly needs to be closed so certainly vulnerable to moving lower and like i said you're into that potential double top scenario so all eyes on the double top on the chart of the s p 500 especially after you've rallied off the pivot low here at 43 4360 sorry on the nasdaq sorry 4360 and you're currently sorry 4630 sorry and then you're looking at uh, resistance at uh, the 4670 uh, zone with the unfilled gap below as well so bear that in mind 60 minute chart as well intraday double top so looking for weakness daily chart into gap fill looking for weakness now we cross reference the nasdaq and the uh, nasdaq with the semicons and the biotechs so let's bring up this chart of the semiconductors now the daily chart of semiconductors certainly is in um, in cloud nine territory cuckoo land okay but you do have the unfilled gap below that certainly needs to close so watch out for that unfilled gap below okay folks now the 60 minute chart see anything at all we haven't made a new high uh, if anything you're making a potential lower high and then obviously you've got the unfilled gap and the unfilled gap and the unfilled gap so multiple unfilled gaps below on the semicons so again looking for weakness from my perspective if you fail to make a new high then you're looking to test a lower high and a lower low okay in terms of the biotechs let's have a look here the biotechs in the daily chart putting in a doji indicating weakness folks okay so just bear that in mind the weekly chart or at present has broken out certainly has broken out so you certainly have to respect that to a large extent but again the daily chart indicating a doji and indicating weakness okay so again that's certainly something that you uh, would certainly consider okay just connecting this across and you can certainly see you've got a diagonal trend line there okay 60 minute chart is really the key from my perspective okay so again watching out for this zone here to potentially be retested previous resistance equals support here you have an unfilled gap below and an unfilled gap down here so again two unfilled gaps below that need to be closed okay so those are two zones that we're looking at 
Okay, now in terms of the S&P 500, folks, let's bring up the S&P weekly chart. We already know we're in uh, uncharted territory at the moment, led by the uh, potential uh, QE via Japan. Okay, daily chart at the moment, obviously stimulus, etc. A daily chart at the moment, no real signs of a potential pullback. So again, it's premature. 60-minute chart certainly is a sign. Okay, I was expecting the HNS formation with a lower high, but for now you have double top. If you break out a double top at 21.75, then obviously the bulls <clears throat> are back in control. If we actually get a gap down and start to see weakness going into potential gap fill below 21.50, then obviously you are into risk of mode. Again, you're just looking at support and resistance. That's all you're focusing on for now, okay? In terms of the actual market itself, 10-minute chart, again, like I said, double top, and looking for potential support below at 21.60, then you have a support at the 21.55, then gap fill at 21.52. Especially given the fact that my, I'm projecting the actual weakness from the USDJPY and the Nikkei and the Shanghai and obviously European markets as well onto the US markets, you are looking for a move lower. Okay, now let's just cross-reference that with the Russell, Russell 2000. Okay, uh, this is the IWN by the way, the small cap. So let's bring up the daily chart at the moment, and you are literally trading sideways, no real breakout so far, or continuation of the breakout. 60-minute chart certainly indicating resistance, no new, new high high. And obviously you've got unfilled gaps below that certainly need to close. So again, Russell, small cap Russell certainly indicating weakness. Look at the larger cap. Okay, so let's go to the daily chart first of all. Okay, so again, you're into that horizontal resistance and you're stuck there. Looking to move lower 60 minute chart. At the moment, you're basically in that zone. Okay, so again, you've got horizontal resistance here. Horizontal support here okay so again horizontal support and fill gaps below that certainly needs to close okay so again looking for gap fill in terms of the uh, the actual uh, let's just bring this up for you okie dokie right so again looking for this uh, market to close okay yes so certainly looking for it to close you have resistance uh, support and support down here so those are the two zones that you're looking for, okay, in terms of the actual market itself. Okay, so that's the Russell for you. Okay, so again, resistance on the Russell, the daily chart, smaller time frames, and again, looking for weakness, which confirms a weakness on the NASDAQ. Uh, also, when the NASDAQ confirms and projects a weakness on the S&P and the Russell, and they all certainly are aligned together. In terms of the Dow Jones, uh, the Dow Jones at the moment has an inside bar, so again, indicating resistance on the daily chart. 60 minute chart at the moment you have this potential for HS formation with the unfilled gap below so again indicating weakness from my perspective now let's just cross reference that with the Dow transports uh, where are the Dow transports okay I can't find them at the moment oh here we go so the Dow Transportation Index, let's just go to a daily chart. Okay, so daily chart certainly still into that resistance zone, the Dow Transports. No real, exert, uh, make, not making a higher high, let's put it that way. Okay, so again, making a lower high, if anything. So again, given the fact that you've certainly confirmed that potential double top, you are into gap fill resistance. So looking for a lower high. Okay, that certainly seems to be the, uh, the, the actual thesis, looking for a lower high. Looking for 8,000 and obviously looking for a new low below. Okay, so again, looking for risk off. That's basically the situation. Okay, at present, looking for risk aversion, looking for a move low. Okay, so VIX certainly is in uncharted territory. Really, it's no man's land, no real uh, assessment can be taken from there. Uh, let's look at the retail sector on the US. Certainly has pushed higher above the resistance zone. Certainly is in no man's land for now. No real chart can be discerned from there. Home builders, uh, consumer staples, again, looking nothing, not looking overtly bullish. Metals and miners, again, not looking overtly bullish. If anything, certainly looking weak. Okay, so again, looking for weakness. That's all I can say. Certainly looking for weakness. If we start to see oil move higher, USDJPY move higher, Asian markets higher up again overnight, then obviously that situation of my analysis is, is no longer valid. And then obviously you take the contrary opinion. That QE certainly rules and QE dictates, and that's certainly what's inflating these markets. And as you know, Brexit has been ignored. Every other bearish variable has been ignored, and we're making new highs. Very, very strange world we live in. Excess liquidity is finding its way to stocks. Okay, be sure to visit CFDs.com, specialist in spread breaking and CFD brokerage, and certainly take advantage of that 25% bonus offer. Goodbye.